Amen. Yes, it is. Jesus is the living word. He came to earth to be the word incarnate, took on the body of a man, and walked among us. Amen. And we call him friend. He calls us friend. Amen. We love him. This was Love Week. Amen. How many people celebrated love on this week? Huh? Amen. Yeah, show of hands. Nobody got a Valentine's card or you gave me candy or no. taken out for a special Valentine meal. Amen. sent someone else a card or candy or flowers or took them out for a meal. You dropped the hints. You dropped the hints. <laughs> hey, hey, man. Yeah, you know, God drops us hints too. Amen. Huh? Amen. Uh, God drops us hints Amen. all the time. Amen. Like Brother D told us a couple of weeks back, he left us a message. Amen. Amen. And uh, he hits around to his agenda and his plan and his will and his way for our lives. And he wants us to get on board. Amen. Amen. So, my message today, up until last night, I didn't have nothing. I was meditating over this thing. I'm like, Lord, don't give a brother something to give to the people of the moment. And it was, it was up until the 12th hour. <laughs> and I thought I was going to have to come in here and wait for the spirit to go off the cuff and, and see what thus saith the Lord. But then the Lord brought it to my remembrance. He said, you know, it was love week. Ladies and Amen. Right. And we are Love Christian Center. Yes. Amen. There you go. Right here at 3755 Kings Highway in Douglasville, Georgia. And we invite all those lovers of God to come and worship with us each and every Sunday morning starting at 10 a.m. Amen. Love Week. And we read the love chapter in our responsive reading today. And you know, our logo has a valentine on it, included in it. So we should be experts on this thing called love. For we are lovers. Amen. Amen. Here at Love Amen. Christian Center. Yes, Lord. So, yeah. come and be a lover. Be a part of this branch of Zion. Amen. 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 This morning I want to reflect from the message, Be God's Valentine. Be God's Valentine. And our scripture is very familiar in the book of John, the third chapter, verse 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Amen. God loved us and loves us, not because of something we have to offer him, not because we set him flowers, not because we sent him candy. Not because we sent him 
a pretty card that we made or bought. And, and not because we took him out to a nice meal at a fancy restaurant or even slaved over a hot stove to prepare something for him, but rather because he had something to give us. See, God knew that we were all sinners, born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and the Bible says that the consequence of sin is death, an eternal separation from God. There is nothing we can do to make ourselves good enough, amen? But God made a way by sending Jesus to help us. Be God's valentine. He willingly gave up his beloved son to save us from eternal damnation. Not because the world was lovable, but because God is love. And he took steps to show it. Jesus became our sacrificial lamb. Through the death of Jesus, the barrier between us and our relationship with God was torn in two, from the top to the bottom, not from the bottom up. But we now have access that we at one time did not have, access to God. He loves us enough to leave that open line of communication. We can go to him and we can express our fears, our concerns, our doubts, our unbelief even. And he will send his comfort to illuminate his word before us, to give us comfort and to assure us of our eternal salvation in him through his son Jesus. Be God's Valentine, love God, for he first loved us. God sent his son to die in our place so that if we would believe in him, we wouldn't perish, but we'll have eternal life. Be God's Valentine. Over in John 13, 34, 35, he said, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another by this we uh, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another anybody ever tell you oh I know you're a Christian I can just tell that you are a Christian. This is because of your characteristics. You are emitting and giving off the characteristics of a loving God. And they can see God in your life, working in your life, and they are drawn to that. This is what God wants of his people. Yes. Be God's valentine. Be his card to the world. Be that message that is sent out, God's message. Be the carrier of it to a dying world. Be his valentine. Love is a cycle. Amen? Amen. The same love that God gives to you, he wants you to offer to everyone that you come in contact with. Pass it on. Mm -hmm. Huh? He gives it to you freely, pass it on freely. Amen? The Holy Spirit pours out God's love into our hearts so that we can pour it out into the hearts. How did he do that? Of others. Amen. We're to love the people God has placed in our family, in our neighborhood, in our church, in our workplace, and even in our school. This is a command. A commandment is not optional. Huh? 
Some of us think coming to church is optional. He said, forsake not the gathering of yourselves together. It's not an option. He said, I want a tenth of all your increase. Some of us think this is optional. It's not an option. We are to love one another. Amen. We must be quick to forgive and love as God loves us. Be God's valentine. Be a carrier of God's love to the world, to everyone that you meet, everyone that you encounter, the ones you care about and the ones who are just casual acquaintances, even strangers, for we Entertain angels mm. on the way. That's right. Mm. That is right. Love is often described in terms of feelings or emotions. Mm. It, it is not just empty talk. True love takes action. Love is a verb, an action word. Amen? Love is not what we feel, think, or say, but more of what we do. Love is the trademark of Christianity. God has gifted us with the capacity for love because we are created in his image. Be God's valentine. Love is the greatest power in the world. It's not the nuclear bomb, the hydrogen bomb. It's, it's not any of that. The greatest power in the world is love. It rejoices in the truth and protects the weak. Love lends a helping hand to all those in need, misery or grief. God is love. It forgives and when possible offers reconciliation. Love does not believe in demanding, but it feels joy in giving. Be a giver. Be a lover. Be God's valentine. Amen. Love breaks down barriers. These relationship barriers often arise from our past relationships, our past hurts, our past betrayals, our wounds and rejections and Disappointments that left us unable to give or to receive love. Love is greater than any of the spiritual gifts and even greater than faith and hope. The greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Anything we do, no matter how heroic, needs to be motivated by love. Love puts others first. Amen? Mm -hmm. Love is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Be God's valentine. Be God's messenger of love. Be God's message of love. Be a carrier of God's love to the world. Now, the Greek language has many variations for love. Y'all heard this many times. Somebody might not know, but there's Eros. Eros, which is named for the Greek god of love and fertility. The Greek word erotos means intimate love. It is where we get the modern day erotic. Eros is a passionate and intense form of love that arouses romantic and dare I say it even sexual feelings. This kind of love is based upon familiarity and it, uh, it directs interaction. It is transient but it is short lived and unless replaced by genuine love Results in disappointment. 
results in hatred, results in divorce, and even murder. Eros is a strong fire that burns quickly. Tread with caution, though. Relationships built solely on the basis of Eros will fail. The second one is philia. The root word for uh, the city of Philadelphia or the city of brotherly love. This type of love is that which is felt among friends who've endured hard times together. It is the most general type of love. It encompasses care and respect and compassion for others. Philia is often evolves the feelings of loyalty. Amen? And then we have storage. Not storage, but storage. S-T-O-R-G-E. Storage. And this is the affectionate love that you have for your family. It is a natural form of affection that often flows between parents and children and children for their parents. Storage is natural. It is present without coercion or force. Yet it can also become an obstacle, especially when family don't agree with or support your purpose or goal. We often see breaks and schisms in families, divides, because of a lack of support and understanding in one's choices and lifestyle. And then there's ludus, L-U-D-U-S, ludus. This is a playful form of love. Ludus is the feeling we have when we go through the early stages of falling in love. You know those butterflies you get when that search of someone is close by? Huh? Sadly, it is temporary condition. Doesn't last long. It goes away or it transforms into another type of love, depending on the circumstance and the situation. But it's transient. Then we have mania. And you think of the word mania as having to do with something crazy. People just acting out of their heads. Maniacs or manic depression or you know we just don't understand it but this type of love that leads a partner into a type of insanity or obsessiveness it occurs when there is an imbalance between eros and ludus the person wants to love and to be loved to find a sense of self-worth feel like they must be loved in order to feel good about themselves if they are valuable, personal, in a relationship. Because of this, they can become jealous and possessive and unbalanced and psychotic. And if the other partner fails to respond or reciprocate with the same kind of mania love, many problems will rise. The sixth type of love is pragma. Pragma. From where we get the word pragmatic. Pragmatism. Pragma is a love that has aged. It has simmered. It has matured and developed over time. It is a love that has transcended the casual. You can find pragma in married couples that have been together for a long time. <laughs> or in friendships that have endured decades. Pragma is the result of effort on both sides. It is a love between people who have learned to make compromises. A love between people who have demonstrated patience 
and tolerance in the other to make the relationship work. It is that type of love that people grasp to say, you know what? I'm in your corner no matter what. I'm your ride or die. Your ace boom coon. And failure in this relationship is not an option. We're going to make it work. Proud. And then we have Philoftia, a big 10 cent Greek word. This is self love. Huh? Yeah, don't get down on self love now because you cannot share what you do not have. Huh? And if you don't love yourself, you cannot love anyone else. So you have to love who you are. Even embrace your own faults because we know we are our biggest critics. You have to be able to look in the mirror and like the person that you see. And if you don't, let that be a flag in your life that you need to make some changes. Huh? Philosophy of love involves loving yourself and embracing all the qualities you perceive as weaknesses. You know you need to do more of this. You know you need to do more of that. You know you need to do less of the other. Embrace that and love yourself. Amen? And we know that the greatest of these is agape. There is no love greater, no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends, John 15, 13. This is the highest type of love. It is God's immeasurable and incomparable love for mankind. He said his only begotten son to be agape for us. Won't you be God's valentine? Agape is the divine love that comes from God in 1 John 4 and 19. It is perfect Caring, sacrificial, and pure. Agape is unconditional. It is the purest form of love that is free from desires and expectations. God did this for us. And we get it, not because of who we are or what we did, but it is offered to us free. For whosoever it calls upon the name of Jesus. Agape is to love others regardless of their shortcomings or flaws. And you probably have some people like this in your life. God is calling you to love them regardless of their flaws, regardless of their shortcomings, regardless of their sins. We can't forgive any one of their sins. We can accept them for who they are. God forgives. Agape love is how God loves each and every one of us, and it is how he wants us to be his valentine and love others. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. It is the most powerful thing on earth and in heaven. Agape love is what separates a believer from those who are of the world and in the world. Through it, we portray the nature of God. You must love God and the people he has sent to be part of what you are doing. It is love that comes from a pure heart. 
There's no ulterior motives, no hidden agendas. Agape love is patient, it endures insults, and bears with those who disagree with us. Although they're wrong, we can still love them. Agape love is kind. It seeks out what it can do for others regardless of what it gets in return. Sometimes don't we put conditions on our love? Agape love is unconditional. Oh yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I'll do this for you if you do this for me. For God, they love does not envy or boast. It does not lord over others or treat them as if they are less important. For God, they love never knowingly or needlessly embarrasses or humiliates anyone. It is not self-seeking or greedy. For God, they love is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongdoing. Because some of us got long memories. Mm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll bring some stuff up, won't we? Mm. Agape love never takes delight in the suffering and misfortune of others. Agape love does not dig up the sins of the past. It protects, it trusts, it hopes, and it perseveres. In 1 John 4 11, the Word of God says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, so ought we love one another. Be God's Valentine. True love feels your pain, it feels your joy. True love handles hardship by focusing on hope. It can tolerate pain or suffering without complaining or getting angry. True love is content and thankful of its blessings. It doesn't envy others. True love, agape, love, is not proud or boastful. It is humble enough to admit its own mistakes and to strive to correct them. True love forgives. It does not bring up past wrongs and accusation or retaliation. True love does not return evil for evil. Hmm. I know, right? It doesn't put you into shame or humiliation. True love is thoughtful and concerned of the welfare of others. It is not selfish or inconsiderate. True love always does the right thing. I mean, people know that doing things right is not always doing the right thing. Sometimes doing things lawful is not always doing the right thing. Just because it's lawful don't make it right. Man makes laws. But God is the law giver. True love protects you and wants you to be safe. It trusts. True love is optimistic. It sees a bright future for you. It offers you the opportunity to grasp God. To grasp love for God is love. Be God's lover. Be a lover of God. And in order to love God, you must love his word. You must keep his commandments. You must know his word. You must give yourself to study of his word. Be God's valentine. How to be God's valentine? Number one, become a child of God. Become a child of love, amen? The first step to walking in agape love is to be born again. God loved you so much he gave you his only son that if you believe in him, you can have a part 
of this eternal life. Amen. Jesus Christ was put to death on the cross in a painful death. Yes, Lord. Call upon him right now, if you haven't already. Allow Christ to reach out to you with agape love that flows straight from the heart of God.